thanks for watching another D6 pack video. Today I'm going to be reviewing another board game. Uh, this time I'm going to be doing Survive Escape from Atlantis by Stronghold Games. Uh, this is a game that if you listen to our podcast you've probably heard us talk about quite a bit by now so I'm not going to go as in depth in this review as some of our previous episodes um, but I wanted to actually show you what the game looks like and give you a better idea a visual idea of how to actually play the game so um, if you're interested in hearing more check out our podcast we talk about it at least on two or three of the episodes so um, with that let me turn the camera around and show you how to play it Alright, so this isn't too much any player count. Um, there is a bold line in the ocean that marks the shape of what this island is supposed to look like, but the orientation of the sand, forest, and jungle, or the mountain tiles, is all just done at random. And then the monster tokens are placed out wherever you see those symbols. Um, and then on the side of the board, just kind of set the whale and shark tokens. Um, those will come into play later in the game. But once you have the board set up like this, then it's time to place your meeples out on the board. So each player will get their own supply of meeples and two boats. And you'll notice that the meeples all have a different number on the bottom of them. So when you're placing your meeples, it's going to involve some strategy in where you're putting them. It's kind of difficult to remember where all of your numbers are. Um, they go from one to six. So I try to remember where my five and my six are and that's usually a pretty good start. If you can get those to the island, you're in good shape. Um, so with that, let me show you the setup for the players and then I'll go into a little more detail on how a player's turn works. All right, so this is the setup after a three-player um, setup. Uh, so each player gets two boats, so there will be twice as many as there are players, but you don't necessarily own a boat. You only control a boat if you have the majority of figures on it. So um, some other strategy tips and rules in placement, which... I did not set these up strategically, I just put them out there to show you what it looks like. But um, as the game is going, and I'll explain this a little more, you're going to flip over tiles and if the there's a figure on that tile, he's not necessarily dead, but he's going to be in danger. So you want to put your figures on tiles that are going to flip last. So it's typically going to go sand, jungle, then mountain. But there's some sand tiles like this one, which is touching no water. And that will have to be flipped later because it, it goes the ones that are touching water first. And these are going to be flipped the last. Those are going to be the last two sand tiles to get flipped. So with that, then we go into the player turns. So the first thing you would do on your turn is use a tile if you have one. Um, at the beginning of the game, no one's going to have any tiles, so that's kind of a moot point. So after that, then you would move your figures. So you can move three times. That can be all one figure, or it can be multiple different figures, one space. So, um, for example, you could go one, two, three. And that's his turn. Then he would flip over a tile. So like I said, you're going to put a figure in danger. So you typically want to flip one that's not near where you have figures. So for blue, uh, this is probably his res least risky choice. So he'll put red in the water and flip that over. Since this has a red border, that means he can save it and use this later in the game. 
this will be one of those tiles that he plays at the beginning of his turn. Um, there's a handy guide on the back of the rule book that tells you what each of these tiles do, but just as an example, this tile says that you can move any one shark token to any open sea space on the board. And he would save that in front of him face down until he wants to use it. Then uh, he would roll this die and this has a symbol for each of the three types of monsters, whale, shark, and sea serpent. And depending on what he rolls, he's gonna get to move one of those figures. So in this case, there are no whales on the board, but if there were a whale, he would get to move it one to three sea spaces in any direction that he chooses. Sharks only move zero to two, and sea serpents can only move zero to one space. If you move a sea serpent into a space with anything else, the sea serpent destroys it. A whale will only destroy boats, and a shark will only destroy people who are not in boats. So again, there's a little bit of strategy in deciding which direction you want to send a particular monster in order to limit your opponent's ability to get out to those islands. Then it'll go to the next person, and that'll continue on. If red is the next person, for example, since they have a swimmer, they can only move a swimmer one space per turn. So that still only counts as one action, but he can't move that figure, like he couldn't go one, two, three, which is, that would be a bad choice anyway because there's a sea serpent there. But um, he could not do that because a swimmer can only swim one space. It's too tiring. And then the game goes around and around like that. Uh, anyone can move empty ships. They move the same way as any other person. If there is a tie for who has the most figures in a boat, they both can control that ship. Um, that's pretty much the entire game. The objective is to get a boat over to the island without getting the figures destroyed and then get them off onto the island. At the end of the game, players will take up all of their figures that have made it onto the islands and total up the points on the bottom of them. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. Um, we've covered this one in a lot of our podcasts, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth in uh, my thoughts about this game. If you're interested in hearing more of what we think, uh, check out episode two of our podcast. We cover a lot of the art and our experiences with this game, and I think that's a, a pretty good episode, and it was a lot of fun to talk about this game in depth in that. So check that out. But just as a slight overview, I really enjoy this game. Um, it's a lot of fun to play. It's easy to teach, and it's quick to play, so it makes it pretty accessible to a lot of different people. Um, you know, Travis is one that's not a huge gamer, but he um, really likes this game. This is one of the ones that he's purchased since we've kind of drug him into gaming. But uh, I really enjoy it, and I uh, think it's kind of a gateway game. The one thing that would be a drawback for me is that this one's fairly confrontational. I mean, you're really trying to sink your other, sink the opponent's ships and take out their meeples and prevent them from getting to the island. And, you know, in the right setting, that can be a lot of fun, but it can also destroy friendships. So um, just kind of be careful and be aware of who you're introducing this game to. So um, with that in mind, I think that this game has a lot of potential for a lot of different people. And I don't want that alone to scare you away from it. But um, it should be something to keep in mind. There are some people who you've probably played with that you just recognize this isn't their type of game. Um, this is going to be one of those games that you're going to want to 
steer more people away from than uh, you might realize in the beginning. So um, that is Survive Escape from Atlantis. And thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel or check us out on our podcast, D6 Pack Podcast. You can search it on pretty much any podcast streaming app and hopefully you should find us. If you can't, let us know. We would like to fix that. Um, you can also talk to us. Let us know what you think about this game. Um, if there's something that is related to it. Uh, I have the expansions, but I didn't cover those here. Uh, maybe let us know what you think about those. So, uh, With that in mind, you can contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at d6packpodcast.com or at the six pack podcast or you can shoot us an email d six pack podcast at gmail.com and that's it thanks for watching